Okay, in today's video, we're going to be using the kinematic equations to solve for one-dimensional horizontal motion. And we're going to go over two examples, and both examples we're going to be solving for the acceleration. And here is the first problem. We're going to have a plane. It's going to have, reach a takeoff speed of 83 meters per second, 300 kilometers an hour. And the plane uniformly accelerates down the runway for 25 seconds. And we want to know what is the acceleration of the plane during this time. Now, as I said in previous videos, the first thing you should always do is write down all five of the variables that are in the kinematic equations. Those are the initial velocity, the final velocity, Vf and Vi, then the change in position, the displacement, delta x, and the acceleration and the time. Now you can write down what you've been given and what you're trying to solve for, the knowns and the unknowns. It says here that the plane reaches a takeoff speed of 83 meters per second. Well, when planes accelerate, they start at rest and that means the initial velocity is zero meters per second. The final velocity is 83 meters per second, and that occurs over a time of 25 seconds. Now we're trying to find the acceleration. We're not given, and we're not solving for the change in position. Okay, so you can see we've been given three variables. We wanna solve for the fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. We need to choose the correct equation. It needs to have the acceleration in it because we're solving for the acceleration, and it also needs to have these other three variables. Let's start at the beginning. This equation, as you'll notice, has no acceleration in it, so we're not going to use this equation. This equation has the acceleration, but do we know the other three variables? Do we know the final velocity? Yes. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes. Do we know the time? Yes. So we're going to use this equation. Let's just see, could we have used these other two? Well, both of these equations have acceleration in it, but they also have the change in position, and we don't know the change in position. So we could not have used, and we cannot use that equation. All right, on the next slide, I'm going to bring the information and the equation with us. We're solving for the acceleration. So the first thing I like to do is to rearrange the equation before I plug any values in and solve for the acceleration. That means the acceleration, we're going to subtract the initial velocity and divide by the time. That's final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. That's our basic standard definition equation for acceleration, change in velocity over change in time. Plug the values in. Remember, it's final minus initial, so it's 83 minus 0 divided by 25 seconds. We get the acceleration of the plane over that 25 seconds. To reach that speed, it would have to be 3.32 meters per second squared. Okay, that is example number one. Let's go through the next one. A car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly for 6.75 seconds. And over that time, it travels. 125 meters. We want to know what would the acceleration of the car have to be to achieve that. Once again, write down all five of your kinematic variables. The variables in the kinematic equation, initial, final velocity, change in position, acceleration time. Write down what you've been given. We know it starts from rest. That means the, the uh, uh, initial velocity is zero. We are not given the final velocity, but we're given the time and we're given the change in position. The change in position being 125 meters, the time being six five seconds, and we're trying to solve for the acceleration, and we're not given the final velocity, we're not trying to solve for the final velocity. So once again, we're given three of the variables. We want to solve for the fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. Let's choose the correct equation. We know, once again, it has to have the acceleration in it, and then it also has to have these other three variables. The first equation still does not have acceleration. The second equation has acceleration, but it also has final velocity. We don't know the final velocity, so therefore, we cannot use that equation. Let's look at the next equation. The next equation does have the acceleration in it. Do we know the other three variables? Well, we know the change in position is 125 meters. We know the initial velocity is zero. We know the time, and once again, we're solving for the acceleration, and this is the same time. So this is the equation we're going to use in this case. Let's see, could we have used the last equation? Once again, uh, this equation has final velocity. We don't know the final velocity, so therefore we could not use that equation. Let's go to the next slide. We'll bring our information and our equation with us. Now, we're looking for acceleration. We're going to solve for acceleration, but in this case, you should notice the initial velocity is zero. That means that this term, initial velocity times the time, is also going to be zero because zero times the time is zero. That simplifies, and now we're going to solve for the acceleration. This would simplify to the change in position is now equal to just one half, at squared. We're going to solve for the acceleration. In order to do that, we're going to multiply both sides by two. So on the top of our equation, 
In the numerator, we get two times change in position, and then we gotta divide by the time, or the time squared actually, divided by the time squared will give us the acceleration. That means the acceleration is equal to two times 125 divided by the time squared, and the acceleration in this case would be 5.49 meters per second squared. Okay, so you'll notice, just like I did in all the other problems and in the previous problem from this video, the first thing I always did, step number one, is just write down all five of the variables. Write down what you're given and what you're trying to solve for. You'll notice you're given three, you're trying to solve for the fourth. Choose the correct equation, rearrange the equation for the variable you're trying to solve for, plug in the values, get the answer with the correct units, and there you go. Follow those steps for each of those problems and I think you can do those pretty simply, okay? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. I will place some links at the end of this video to some additional kinematic problems that you can use for practice. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And also, please, please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent helpful physics, chemistry, and math videos, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.